Hello. It's Thursday. I'm back from Missouri. Um, one of the things I did in Missouri, and I uh, covered that in the last uh, video, the last uh, YouTube video, was I, I hauled these um, Hero One robots back with me that I've had for a long time. They were in a storage shed in North Missouri. Um, they were starting, I was worried about them because it wasn't the most, uh, but it, it, the, the environment sucked. It was uh, not a environmentally controlled storage unit. They've been there for, I don't know, seven years. But you can see there's there's dust and stuff on This is the um, this is the Hero Junior. And then this one's the one that I built back in 1982. This is a Hero One. Uh, I've got the covers off of it, but... Um, this is kind of a simplistic one. I've got it on the battery charger, but I think the batteries are shot. But I'll show you. It's, I'll, I'll power it up with the charger in it. Ready. And there you see it's, it's booting up, so that's really good. But I'm going to have to order some batteries off the um, off of Amazon for them. The other one... i got parts everywhere now. There's the covers. I've got... Um, Another Hero Junior chassis. There's the head for it. Um, it's got the boards. They're walking around. It's turning into a freaking mess in this place. I also brought back this uh, Radio Shack cassette player that was uh, made in Japan. It actually plays uh, on the, the number one but it won't rewind, and the, the second one is dead. But it doesn't sound bad. I've been kind of playing it. There's the other Hero other one. This is the third. I've got two Hero Ones and two Hero Juniors now. I've got three chargers, one arm, uh, a two teaching pendants. I've got the remote control for the Hero Juniors, and I've got the factory remote control for the Hero One, which is kind of a rare thing but I'll, I'll show you the um the other hero one in a minute here hero junior chassis with the head off of it so i need to clean my shop out um i'll show you the other one this is the third i've got two hero ones and two hero juniors now i've got three chargers one arm uh i teach two teaching pendants i've got the remote control for the hero juniors and I've got the factory remote control for the Hero One, which is kind of a rare thing. But I'll, I'll show you the um, the other Hero One in a minute here. One that I built in 1982 to boot up, and I set the clock on it, and now the clock is running. So that means that all the the software and the, everything's good. Because if you can access the clock, it's alive. So I'm really happy about that. It's a very expensive clock. Uh, when I bought this in 1982, I was like 24 years old. And my wife and I had just had our first baby. And we didn't have a dime. And Heathkit had a credit thing that would take people like me. So I financed about $1,100 through Heathkit, through Zenith, it wasn't Zenith back then, they hadn't, Heath, when I bought the Zenith, I hadn't bought it yet, but, um, they sent me this card, as so I was a member, it was very cool for me, uh, first, like, huge expense I ever made, and this thing came on a pallet, it, you know, you, it wasn't an Amazon life, it was on a freaking pallet, it was like nine boxes, it's like getting construction material, and I mean, just the whole process, I spent about five hours a night for five weeks when I got home from work every night. I had a space set up, putting this thing together. You had to put every single capacitor, resistor, diode, wiring, transistors. It was like, it's all numbered. It was all in little bag, thousands of little baggies. Uh, you followed, it was like a 200 page construction thing with boxes next to each step. And I've got my, the book I used with this, and it's got every one of the boxes is checked out. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> it was like in some kind of funk or something. Some kind of building phase. Anyway, 
This thing's very cool to me because it's a piece of my history. And I carry that Heathcote uh, member card around in my wallet for like 25 years because I just thought it was so cool because they went out of business. What, 1988, uh, 89? But they were such a cool company. And I used to get their catalogs. You know, they, they only had a... I mean, they had like a lot of stuff because it was Heathcote. You know, stereos, ham radio, you know, everything. You could put it against a kit. It was phenomenal. And this was like the Apex. This in the the 2000 uh, was... I don't think I want to mess with one of those. They look kind of daunting to me. But the other one I've got, uh, the other Hero 1 I've got, and I'll, I'll go and find that. I found that yesterday because I took the covers off. I was digging around. I said, that thing was factory built. It was a factory built letter tucked up inside the thing that was signed by the engineer that actually put the whole thing together. So that's rare. And, and they had all the options on it. I mean, everything they could offer it had on there. I'll have to, there's like a neural net. And this thing's, this one that I bought was like their low budget model. You didn't get a radio, uh, you had a bench seat, and a four speed, no air conditioning. But I didn't know that at the time. But I thought it was cooler than hell. Because when I look at the other one, it's like a Cadillac, and it weighs like 20 pounds more than this one does. And it's got like eight other new boards in it, and there's a huge amount of wiring in it. It's got the arm, remote control thing. So I'll show that to you, but I had no idea that was going on back then. I wouldn't have been able to. This is actually the fourth Hero Robot I've got. It's a Hero 1. Um... This one was actually factory built. It's got all the mods on it. It's got the arm. It's got the extra memory. It's got the RSP32 serial port for the um, cassette. It's got the remote control radio receiving unit on it. It's got a lot more stuff than the other one does, and it weighs 40 pounds. And I totally threw my back off moving this thing around. It's just awkward, but uh, just wanted to let you know as I get into these more. But I, the stupid zero button popped off when I was putting it in the car in Missouri, and I put it back on and covered it with a blanket, and when I took the blanket back off when I was unloading it here, the button's gone. I can't find anyone in the car. It's like crap. It's probably in there somewhere. Uh, I'll, I'll probably end up doing something about that, but anyway, there's... Here's my kitty. All right, talk to you later. This is the stack of documentation that came with the robots. I'm gonna go through it. You see there was a data cassette, data set recorder that came with it. It's not the Duran Duran tape, I put that in. It's a Radio Shack, they somebody, um, modified it to use as a data set recorder, but it's off the shelf. I'm going to look at that. That may have been done by the Heathkit factory because I think that came with this robot. Uh, I'll look at this in further detail separately. But got quite a quite a bit of documentation that came with the Heroes and um, the Hero Juniors. Can you bring me that tray, Brad? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm really not embarrassed about it at all. It was a joke. You can't handle it, Brownie. These. I can't handle it. <laughs> can't handle it. I'm like, <laughs> she's, really she's still. I'll give you some of that. What is that? German chocolate cake brownie crap we have? No, I'll certainly uh, support you on that because I want to get rid of it. This is 20 years difference between two robots. This is 2023. This is 1984. I think 84, maybe. That one's talking, see. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for being cute. All right. Um, that's it for now. Bye.